All right, we're with Michael Hoffman. Hello, COVID campers. And Michael is a fellow uh, speaker, a colleague. Mike and I have known each other how long? 20 years? At least 25 years. Yeah, yeah. okay. I, I know so I've been long enough, long, long enough to know that we're kind of in this boat together and uh, both our calendars are just wiped off the map. So this is why we kind of have time for this. But I wanted to make, put a, a, you know, kind of a personal twist on this and uh, just to do a little interview. How's it going? I mean, you're, uh, you're not only a dad, but a granddad and a husband and an entrepreneur. So how are you dealing with the COVID camping? Woohoo! Well, you know, now that we have time to really think about things and think about that, it's been, it's been really interesting, you know, um, uh, a lot of observations. I've made, you know, lots of observations over the last couple of weeks, but uh, to, I love the concept of camping because it's exactly what it could be, you know, as far as trying to put a positive spin on it. But, you know, rarely do you get a chance to really slow down and stop for a while. I have four kids and uh, two of them are married. Um, one's engaged and four grandchildren. We have four grandchildren and they're all within 10 miles, but we just started to experience the, my daughter just had a child about uh, four weeks ago. And uh, they are already kind of, you know, self-isolating, you know, new, newborns, that type of thing. But it's really gotten to the point where, you know, we've started to experience this distance thing. And my kids are very tight. You know, we're a very tight family. And so we, literally, what have we been doing? And we've been, I got to tell you, we've been having a blast. Yeah. We really have been having a blast. My kids are so funny. But um, I, I would like to say that it feels like it's been challenging and all the suffering. But I got to tell you, we've really been taking advantage of it. And it's been a lot of fun. I got ideas for you if you want because um, uh, I think this is the time to really build traditions and value, you know, the, the things that when the, smoke, when, when the tornado rises or the, when, the, when the plague rises, I will know somebody under, with skill sets. And uh, uh, we've been actually having, you know, as much fun as you possibly can with a really stressful situation. It's been, it's been good. The family's been good. We've been um, being very light about it. Yeah, well, you just, I just had a flashback. You had, when your daughter, this was years ago, maybe five, six years ago, mm -hmm. and you did a little dance video thing. Tell us a little bit about that story. <laughs> Expect to see more, actually. Actually, it was kind of interesting because we have had more people come out of the woodwork and go, we need another video. But in a nutshell, what happened was we had a, a four-day lockdown. We, you know, we're in, we're in Dallas. And, you know, for those of you who don't know, Dallas, we don't do hard water. You know, we, do, we don't, we don't, and we had, ice. <laughs> yeah, ice, it shuts down everything. Our nearest snowplow is in Denver. So, you know, we don't do a hard water. So we had, what was it, like a quarter, half an inch of ice, and it froze the city for four days. Yeah. And on day three, my daughter, who was um, still living with us at the time, she was 24 years old, and she was, she pretty much had it and said, uh, what do you want to do? I said, I don't know, what do you want to do? And she goes, let's make a video. I said, okay, what do you want to do? And we put the uh, iPad up on the, in the kitchen and, right. and a new song came out, which tells you when it came out. Uptown Funk. I think we're the first ones oh, to actually yeah, do a okay, video. Yeah. Uptown, yeah. Uptown Funk, yeah. And uh, we did a dance in the kitchen to Uptown Funk. 15 million views. Right. Yeah, it went viral. It just went viral. And it was absolutely incredibly nuts. But it was, uh, uh, it, it was really very eye opening because you had, we had hundreds of letters, hundreds. It was shared 250,000 times. Wow. Yeah. And, and I think the reason why I love talking about it is because, especially t things like this, is we had hundreds of letters and they fell into two camps either I wish I had or you remind me of, uh -oh. which just kind of, you know, is a kind of fuel for the fire that everybody wants, you know, that you know, when times get kind of tough, we want to. We want that banding together thing. And yeah, 15 million views for a stupid video dancing in the kitchen. So how are you dealing with this right now, personally? Like, what is anything stand up? Well, I mean, you and I are both experiencing it. You know, um, our calendar has evaporated. We're one of those industries where, you know, most of our business is done by gathering people and it doesn't exist anymore. So it's been put on hiatus until further notice. Right. So it's a, it's a real strong opportunity to kind of go, okay, how, what do I, you know, my, my business is not keynoting. My business is my subject matter expertness. And now it's a matter of um, regrouping and saying, how else can I deliver this in ways that people need to digest it? So what's the form and how do I, how do I become a resource again when people, they still need what we have. It's just a matter of how do we get it out to them? So the creativity is through the roof. That's kind of the approach I'm taking. Um, and so we're, we're doing a lot of brainstorming on, on that. But right now the business, just put on hold. So we got viewers at home that, uh, you know, their, their sales have been put on hold. Maybe they mm -hmm. got let go. 
maybe they're a single mom, single dad uh, yeah. going on. I mean, this COVID camping, I mean, we're trying to, we're not making fun of it. We're, we're having fun with it. And, uh, you know, as best we Big can. Big difference. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sure. Sure. And uh, any advice that you'd give out there for people just uh, kind of locked into this, this mindset of maybe panic or what do I do? What do I do? Yeah. And, and for, first of all, keep in mind that anything that you're feeling is totally, totally, it's not um, out of the ordinary or it's not something that you should go, gosh, this is, this is not justified. Oh, it's justified. <laughs> My, I, I was actually talking with a very good friend of mine. Um, she's in her early thirties and uh, we were having a conversation. She's a young mom and, um, and she was, I mean, this is a, usually a very strong person and she was freaking out. I mean, just kind of freaking out. And so we were just, I was just letting her vent and talk and, and it really kind of surprised me on how much um, she was, the anxiety that she was feeling on all kinds of things like, where are we going? Is this over? You know, we joke around kind of good, good run America. You know, is it, is it done? <laughs> I mean, what do we do next? Or what are my kids are young? What are they going to have? And so all those anxieties and just by letting her talk, um, really seem to help um and but the but the question is is it's okay to feel that way it's not okay to stay there yeah and so so the question is what do you do in two areas and this has kind of been helping i've been I'm having lots of talks with the kids with my kids and i have older kids you know um 28 to 32 uh -huh. and um so my kids are right in that age and it really kind of perked up my attention to start listening more to the people around me but also and it helped me to kind of, okay, so what do we do in two areas? Either how do we, how do we manage the current fires and w what's next? You know, what do we have to do down the road? Cause this will be a season. They're gonna find a cure. They're gonna, I mean, it's, we're gonna get back to normal. The economy is gonna be a little wild before it starts to recover. There's gonna be a lot of hurting people around us that are gonna be impacted by this. So how do we look outside ourselves? and? and start to plan. So that management leadership type of approach has really been helpful for me because uh -huh. it's kept me thinking forward, you know? So deal with what's happening right now. There are a lot of people hurting, so pay attention. You know, let's deal with that. Keep everybody is, is moving forward. But also start thinking down the road. What do I have to do to set myself up so when these things start to loosen up? All right. Really Any nice. comical things that have come out of this uh, recently for you? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> actually, a couple of weeks, before, actually, not even a couple of weeks, about a week before it really hit the fan, you know, China was going through its thing. I had just come back from a trip and uh, my daughter and uh, my daughter who was living with us, uh, um, she, she was sending texts to my wife that, and, and myself saying, you know, it's kind of this thing with China is getting kind of crazy. It's, you know, should we be panicking? I mean, should we be like buying stuff? I'm like, Oh, come on. She's going, I don't know. I, I've been hearing a lot of people. They've been, you know, you might want. I said, okay, well, I'm, I'll tell you what, I'm going to swing by Costco and see, see what we got. I went into Costco, pick clean, Jack. I mean, I'm like, oh, you know, oh no. And I, I, I have to tell you that feeling of panic and, you know, that, that panic buy of, oh no, maybe, maybe, what do we, what do we have to do? And, and do I, why do I need eight cases of water? But maybe I do. And so I started looking up online on that cost. I go, well, well, okay, well, is there anything I should actually prepare? And I ended up getting the, the cards. I had a card. I had one of those push cards and I was buying stuff. I, we, I have been on a diet for five years. I don't eat sugar. And I bought a 25 pound bag of sugar. I went, <laughs> I don't know why. I went Little House on the Prairie. I bought sugar and I was searching for flour because there was no toilet paper or sand, you know, anything that you could wash your hands with. And I, I bought, it made me laugh. I, I bought a 25 pound bag of sugar and uh, I don't even know why. I, I, that's, that's what Little House on the Prairie did. And that was my thinking was Little House on the Prairie. We make biscuits or something. So you maybe can barter sugar for uh, yeah, no. essentials. <laughs> I don't have hand sanitizer, but I've got 25 pounds of sugar. We should talk. <laughs> well, uh, let's wrap this up. Eddie, you know, this, you've always been a person that's used humor almost every time we talk. Every time I've seen you perform, every time I've seen you speak, your humor is a central part of it. What have you learned about humor that we could all use in terms of these uh, times today? Well... I think you said something really cool uh, a few minutes ago, which was, uh, you know, we're not making fun of it, but we're making light of it. Uh, I don't know how you said it. I got to rewind and, and see that because I thought it was really well put. You know, humor we're is... We're fun of it. We're having fun with it. We're, yeah, having fun, fun with it. it. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes when we feel the victim of things, 
we have to start to laugh a little bit, start to find the funny. Um, and if you can't, if you, that, that's not you, then surround yourself with people who find funny. Right. Because the, the endorphins that are released and the chemicals that are released, I think are very, very beneficial to be a positive outlook on things. Because until I get called home, there's always something to do. And there's always, there's always one more thing to do. And I think finding, finding the, the, the positive spins or making light of uh, really kind of keeps those, those chemicals, those endorphins going and, and that positive outlook that says, okay, I want to be a part of what's going on and not a victim of what's going on because I have more options with yes than I do no. That's always been a philosophy of mine. So I have more options with yes than I do no. And, that, and I think humor opens up those opportunities to see, uh, to see more options for yes. Right. All right. Well, uh, just to do a little plug for yourself, um, if there's ever any speaking events, I don't know when, not now. <laughs> but yeah. You know, if ever you get together with another human being and you want a third, <laughs> you know, hey, a coffee, you know, a biscuit. I've got sugar. If you've got flour, we can, we can get ourselves a party. Working so I, uh, uh, Michael at ignitingperformance.com or Michael at Positively Outrageous Service. Uh, Dot com. Uh, we, that's what we do is we help ignite and equip organizations to create that culture of ownership. Uh, and that's what we, that's what we want to help you do too. Those people who, who own their situation, own those communications, own those people in front of them that we want all of our folks to do. We can help yeah. you do that. So well, you're a good man, Michael Hoffman and uh, stay safe. Yeah, but uh, you need sugar or you need dancing lessons. Mike's your guy. <laughs> Take care. Hi campers.